Mom, could you help me with this shirt? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize you were reading. That's all right, son. I'm almost done. No, that, that's fine. I got it. Um, are you sure? I, oh, I'd be happy to. Yeah, Mom, I, I can do this. Okay. Mom, do you always get stuff out of the Bible when you read it? I usually pray and ask the Lord to give me something that I need, yes. And he always does? Sometimes I have to read for a while. But yes, son, he always does. So why do you ask? I'm uh, just wondering. I, I don't usually get stuff out of the Bible when I read. I guess I'm just not as spiritual as you, Mom. <laughs> Sam, God loves you just as much as he loves me. And his word will speak to you if you let it. Yeah, I guess so. I think I really need God to help me with this shirt, though. <sighs> Let's see. How about we plug the iron in first? <laughs> <clears throat> you remind me of your father, domestically challenged. Oh, give me a break. Someday, I guess I'll just have to find a good wife like you. Uh, speaking of which, how are you and Trisha Davidson doing? <sighs> Fine, I guess. Her dad's the problem. Her dad? He seemed like a nice person when I met him. Yeah, he is, but... He's unsaved. He gives Trish a terrible time about going to church and youth activities and, and me. Hmm. Have you tried praying for Mr. Davidson? Yeah, but he's like a modern-day Saul of Tarsus or something. <laughs> I mean, he knows everything about the Bible, but he just doesn't believe in Christ. Hmm. And then when Trish tries to talk to him, he gets mad at her, and then I get upset, and then she gets frustrated with me. And I don't know. I guess I just don't have any hope that it's ever going to work out. You know, I was just reading about the Apostle Paul this morning. He was a pretty tough case, but not too tough for God. Yeah, God just zapped him one day, didn't he? <laughs> it would appear that way. But then I was reading and I was thinking about all the things that the Bible doesn't tell us. What do you mean? Well, it would appear that before the Apostle Paul got saved, the Lord had been working on his heart for a long time because he kind of already knew everything about God. Well, the only way that would be possible is if other Christians in his life were praying for him and having a good testimony in front of him. God likes to do the impossible, son, and he also likes to display his power through people like me and you, his people. That's why it's so important for you and Trisha to have a good testimony in front of Mr. Davidson. Did you read a verse about the Bible when you were reading? Well, let's see. You know what? I was reading in Ephesians. Here we go. Chapter 4. No, chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. God's power working through us. And that's what I meant about having a good testimony in front of Mr. Davidson. Because the only God that he knows is the one that he sees working in your life. Yeah, I, I guess so. I, I, I never really thought of it like that before. I'm going to pray that God will use you, Sam, to be a good testimony to Mr. Davidson. You know, let's see here. God likes to do the impossible. He likes to empower our lives. This iron didn't do anything for this shirt until we plugged it into the power source. See? Now, the only way that we can be connected to God's power is if we connect ourselves to the power source. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. I, I know God can do his part, but just pray that I can do mine. He will, son. He will. God likes to use his people, like you and me. He likes to empower our lives. But remember, you have to be plugged into the power source. Thanks, Mom. I'll remember that every time I iron a shirt. And I'll make sure you get lots of opportunities. Hmm. Saul of Tarsus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, 
But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Ananias! Ananias! Open up! Ananias! Please, Lord, protect us. You are needed immediately, Ananias. Let us in. There is one here to see you. Please, it is urgent. What? What is it? Who is it that demands to see me at this hour of the night? One Saul of Tarsus, sir. He's demanding to see you now. Daddy, don't open the door. He'll kill us. We need a leader, someone who has not only excelled in the law, but one who could lead a campaign against these heretics. He must be fearless, but he must also be loyal to our authority. This is God's work, and it must be carried out in strict adherence to the scriptures. Nothing less is acceptable to God, and we must tolerate nothing less. This sect is growing rapidly and seems to be springing up in new areas daily. We must find their leaders and deal with them swiftly. We must be cautious, however. The common people will side with those being oppressed, which will only plan to their cause. That is why we need someone who can rally these people against these radicals. But that will not be easy. That's why this leader is so important. He must have a strong spiritual presence, someone that the people will recognize as a holy man. But he must also possess the fortitude to execute these dissidents regardless of the cost. You seem to be deep in thought, Gamaliel. Do you know such a man? Yes, I have had a student that meets the criteria of which you speak. You are engaging in a risky venture, but I am certain he is exactly who you are looking for. How would you describe him, sir? Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. He is of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, touching the law, a Pharisee. He fasts twice a week, gives tithes of all, and has kept all of our laws in strict adherence to the law. A bright man with multiple gifts in speech and language. He has the constitution of iron and is relentless in his pursuit of excellence. Where does the man live? May we arrange a meeting with him? I believe he is nearby. I will send for him. I will arrange a time and a place, although I would advise that you not say anything about this until I can contact him personally. Thank you, sir. God bless you. We shall await word from you. Shalom. Does this help a little, Mother? A little, thank you. Her fever seems to be climbing, Dad. I know. The doctor said that it might. Isn't there anything else we can give her? Just, just the herbs. That's all the doctor said that we could give her to help her ease the pain now. Here, Mom. Why don't you try to drink a little? I want... What is it, Mom? What can we get you? I want to talk to you. Please, go and get Anna. Now's not the time, Mom. You must save your strength. Try to rest. No. It won't be long now. She's having a really hard time with all of this, Mother. Are you sure you don't want to wait? Yes. I must talk to each of you. Please get Anna. Please, dear. Don't try to do too much. Pray for me, dear husband. I must have God's strength and power to speak with him before I... He will. He will. And I will pray. Anna. You're so beautiful. So young. 
I wish I had more time to give you. Mom, Mom, we know you love us, and we love you, and we will forever remember all that you have done for us. You're the best mom three girls could ever have. It is only because of God's strength and power in my life. That's what I want you to remember. God is your refuge and strength. He will never leave you. His grace will keep you. His power will enable you. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Mom, you made all of us memorize those verses, and we will forever remember them. I love you, Mom. We all love you, Mom. Thank you. Ruth. Ruth, sweetheart. She's gone. Well, I think Mark likes you, Cecilia. He's always watching you at school. He even asked me if you would be down at the market later tonight. He's so immature. Why doesn't he just talk to me instead of always talking to you about these things? Guys are shy. At least, the nice ones are. You should be happy he's showing interest. You know you like him. I guess. Why do guys have to be so complicated? Well, from what I hear, most guys think we're pretty complicated. <laughs> hey, Anna. Anna, what's wrong? Anna. Oh, it's okay. Come sit down. It's my mom. Is she okay? She's gone. Gone, but where? She's dead. My mom is gone, and I never even... Oh, Anna! I never told her that I loved her. Why? How could God take her like that? She was so good. She loved God. She was always praying and reading her scriptures. She never did anything to hurt anyone. Why would God do this? Why? I'm sure that I God... don't want to know a God like that. It's not fair. How could I trust a God that would take my mom like that? My family doesn't deserve this. Oh, Anna, I'm sure you'll understand someday. God has a he reason. He doesn't need to bother sharing it with me. I'm sick of trying to trust in someone I can't see, I can't hear, and that would take the most important person in my life from me. I can't. Can't or won't? Can't and won't. Never. God, I hate you. I've been praying much about this meeting, gentlemen. Likewise. I believe the Lord will bless our efforts to engage this man in our cause. If he is the right man, and God wills it, then we will be successful. Well, his resume is sterling. Blameless, as far as I can tell. Agreed, but I'm still looking forward to meeting him. We're looking for much more than credentials. We need a man who is unique and special, gifted for such a time as this. Gentlemen, I want to introduce you to one of my finest students, Saul of Tarsus. It is an honor to meet you, Saul. God bless you. Thank you for agreeing to meet with us. And it is a great pleasure to meet each of you. Gamaliel has told me much about you and your plans. And it is my utmost desire to uphold the holy law of God and to please Jehovah with my life. Are you aware of the teachings of these disciples of Jesus Christ? I have never met this Jesus Christ, but I have read and heard much of him. He, he obviously blasphemed the law and the prophets, and there is not a shred of truth in what he taught about himself. Good? Yes. A student of the scriptures? Yes. But by no means the promised Messiah. All who follow him must be silenced. 
He seems to have performed some powerful miracles. Are you aware of this? I can assure you that he is nothing more than another imposter. Many have come through the centuries claiming to be the promised one of God. But it is clear that he is not the one we seek. But his followers are many and growing rapidly. The scriptures accurately describe people as sheep. They need leadership. Without it, they go astray and follow these false teachings and false prophets. Well, then how do you plan to convince these sheep that they follow a false shepherd? People respect authority that leads them back to the law. With the backing of you as the chief priests and scribes, I can convince civil government to give us jurisdiction in the towns where these groups are meeting. We will break up their meetings and imprison their leaders. Then we will encourage the people to go back to their synagogues and study their scriptures. And if that doesn't work? Then we will begin executing them, one by one. No one dies a martyr's death for that which he does not believe. And I am willing to take as many lives as is necessary to stop this heresy. Daddy, we've got to do something. She won't listen to anyone. There's always a way that seems right to those who reject God. But we can't just let her run away, can we? Your mother's death has been hard on all of us. And I'm afraid it's been especially hard on me. I just, I just don't think I have the strength to fight any longer. I'm afraid only... God's power can change your mind now. Anna! Anna, please. God loves you, and God? You expect me to believe in God after all he's put us through? I'm not so sure if there is a God. And if there is, I don't but want Anna. anything. Mother would... When will you stop living in the past? Mother is dead. And maybe you'd better check to see if your God died with her. Anna! Please don't leave, Anna. Anna, at least say goodbye to your father. God never gave me a chance to say goodbye to mom. So I'm sure it's okay with him if I don't get say goodbye to the rest of you either. This should be all you need. I've had the scribes check each of these three times to make sure all is in order. This should give you the authority to do whatever is necessary to stop these heretics. And I can assure you, you will face no resistance from the religious councils. Thank you for your work, Aaron. This looks more than sufficient. And I'm not anticipating any problems. For our authority comes from God and his law. Indeed, we'll, we'll have you secured what you need from the civil authorities. I have. Um, we need to check with the local authorities once you arrive in the towns where these heretics are meeting. But I have been assured that they have been notified of our plans and will comply. God be with you. Aaron, God honors those who keep and defend his law. There is no other way. His name will be vindicated, and you, my friend, will not be disappointed. Shalom. Was that awesome last night or what? How would you know? You were so drunk. And you should talk. Who was that guy you were with? I don't know, but he shared lots of money and didn't mind spending it on me. You don't <laughs> even remember his name? No. Seriously, one of these days, you're gonna flirt with the wrong guy. Yeah. That's why I'm counting on you to protect me. Oh, when you act the way you did last night, a whole garrison of Roman soldiers couldn't help you. 
I love Roman soldiers. Oh my. Look, what are they doing to him? Have you more to say? The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophets. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What's he talking about? What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hands made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now been the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. This man speaks blasphemy. <sighs> Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Anna! Anna, are you okay? Oh. Oh. She's badly hurt. <coughs> Or lay not the sin to them. No. Oh, are you okay? Somebody please help us. Sir, could you could you please help us? Get her out of here. This is no place for you. Just stay out of the way next time. Would you like us to remove the body, sir? Sir. Your wishes? Just, just leave me alone for a moment. Forgive? Forgive? So what do you think, Doctor? We've done exactly as you told us to. One of us has been by your side constantly. It appears her wounds have healed nicely. She is strong and coherent. I am anxious to remove the bandages from her eyes, however. Now, sometimes an injury to the head of the shield, she can affect the sight. How long has it been again? Exactly a week today, sir. All right, well, let's have a look. Uh, Everything appears normal. Go ahead and open your eyes. Anna? Anna, sweetheart, can you see anything? Please, give her a moment. Relax, Anna. Now, uh, do you see anything? Do you see light, Anna? Everything is completely black. Daddy, I'm so scared. I'm so sorry, sir. Anna, Anna, it's okay. I'm so sorry, Daddy. No. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. It's all right. We're here for you. I was so blind to God, Daddy. I couldn't see what he was trying to do. He was trying to show me that he loved me. But I was so blind, I didn't understand. Mom tried to show me. When that man died, his face, it was just like Mom's face when she died. I remember, Daddy. Her face looked like an angel when she died. She wanted me so badly to accept Jesus as my savior. But I didn't understand. Now he's blinded my eyes so I can see him. I see him, Daddy. He loves me, and I want to love him. Please help me pray. Okay. Uh, dear Lord. I am so sorry for my sin. I know that I don't deserve your love and what you did for me when you died on the cross. But I know that you died for my sins. You've shown me your love through my mom and that man, Stephen. Please. I need you to come into my heart and save me from my sins. And I want you to, dear Jesus. Please help me to live for you. And through your power, help someone else to see you too. Amen. Amen. I love you, Jesus. 
I wish I could do something more for you. I feel as though all I can do is, is pray. Lord, there are so many who are in the darkness of their sin, just like I was. I thought I could see the way I wanted to go, but I was blind to the truth. I thought I knew the way that would make me happy, but I was so wrong. Lord, thank you for blinding my eyes so that I can see you. Lord, there are so many who are just like me. Some are even religious and think they walk in the light, but they're in darkness. Father, help these religious leaders. Men like Saul, the one who did this to me. Lord, if you could save Saul of Tarsus, that would show your awesome power. If you can change my life, I know you can change his too. With you, nothing is impossible. I know that you can save Saul of Tarsus, and I'm going to believe that you will. Lord, he's blind to your way. Open his eyes, dear Jesus. Help him to see your power. Well, it looks like we won't have any more assemblies in this town for a while. <laughs> yeah. We put practically everyone in jail. Everyone we didn't kill, that is. You know, I heard the jails are so full that they had to start hiring extra guards. <laughs> With everyone dead or in jail, the women will have to start preaching. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Where to next, Chief? We must get to Damascus. Damascus? Damascus. Damascus. Isn't that where we stone the men? who's um, trying to preach the entire time and saying strange things. What, what was his name? Yeah, Stephen. His, his name was Stephen. Stephen, yes, that's the same man who... Oh! Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who, who art thou, L Lord? I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. But, Lord, what, what wilt thou have me to do? Arise, and go into the city. It shall be told thee there what thou must do. Sir? Sir? S sir, are, are you all right? My eyes, I, I, I can't see. Help me, Claudius. P please, Marcus, get me to Damascus. Lord, you've been so good to me. But I must confess that my faith wavered when you took my wife home to be with you. And when Anna ran away from home, I doubted. Lord, my faith in your power is so small. Please, Lord, increase my faith. Ananias. Behold, I am here, Lord. Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias, coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to the saints that are at Jerusalem. And here... He hath authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on thy name. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Lord, increase my faith. And a knife, and a knife, open up, and a knife. Lord, please protect us. You are needed immediately, Ananias. Let us in. There is one here to see you. Please. It is urgent. What, what is it? Who is it that demands to see me at this hour of the night? One Saul of Tarsus, sir. He's demanding to see you now. Daddy, don't open the door. He'll kill us. No, no, Anna. It's okay. God came to me. He spoke to me. Saul, Saul of Tarsus. 
He needs me. I've been praying for Saul, Daddy. And I have no doubt that you have, Anna. But I must hasten. I want to go with you. Anna, it was Saul of Tarsus that... I know. But that was when he was blind, and so was I. God's power has changed my life. It can change his too. You're sure you want to go? If I can take your hand. I'm going to need God to take both of our hands and lead us through this. I believe, Lord. I believe. Saul? Yes. Yes, I am Saul. Are you Ananias? I am. Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, which appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me unto you, that thou mightest receive thy sight. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and to witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. But ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the othermost parts of the earth. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Anna? Thank you for believing in the power of God. Mom, mom, you, you, you won't believe it. Sam? I mean, the, the car crashed, and then it's just all the fire, and it's just, oh. Sam, slow down. 
town. But, 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 but Mom, Trisha's dad just got saved. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so happy for you, Trisha. You'll never believe how it happens. Hey, can I tell her, Trish? Yeah, of course. I'm all ears. Well, Mr. David and I were working in, in his garage and, and building some shelves and stuff when we heard this, this huge crash from outside. It was really loud. We heard it inside the house. This lady had swerved and she hit this, this pole. And, and so she got out of the car and stuff, but her little baby girl was trapped in the back seat and she couldn't get out. There were fluids and, and they were all around the car. And I, and I just prayed that, that God would use me. When we got there, Sam was screaming for everyone to stay away from the car. Then it would explode. Mom, I don't even remember what, what I said. I just remember praying that, that God would help me get that little girl out of the car. And so when Mr. Davidson was, was helping the lady away, I ran toward the car. And, and Mom, I pulled on the handle, and it opened. And I grabbed that girl. And when I was running away, the car... The it, car exploded, Mrs. Welker. Oh if Sam hadn't gotten that little girl... It, it was God, Mom. I'm so proud of you for saving that little girl, but how did Mr. Davidson get saved? That's the amazing part. Well, well after the, the fire trucks and the police came and put out the fire and stuff, Mr. Davidson and I were walking back to the house, and he told me about what a hero I was and, and how surprised he was at, at how calm I was during the whole thing. And so, so I told him that it wasn't me, but it was God working through me. Mom, do you remember, do you remember when I, I was trying to iron that shirt and, and it wasn't plugged in so it didn't work? Well, I told him about that. And I told him about how that day I learned that I couldn't do anything by myself, but with God, all things are possible. I never see my dad listen so intently, like he was listening to Sam. I was praying so hard. He said, Sam, I always thought I knew everything I needed to know about God, but after seeing you, how do you know him so personal? Mrs. Welker, Sam took my dad from the Romans Road, and he prayed and asked Christ to be his savior. I'm so proud of you, son. But mom, it wasn't me. It was God working through me. I, I was so scared throughout the whole thing, but just felt like God was right there beside me the whole time. His power was, was so real to me. Yes, Sam. His power is so real to us. God likes to, to save people like Saul of Tarsus and like Mr. Davidson. He likes to empower us, his people, to do things that we never dreamed possible. But first, we have to be connected to the power source. Amen. All right, thank you, speech and drama department. Let's thank them once again as they go down. Why don't you stand and uh, thank them for their great work tonight. All right, remain standing, and if you have a Bible, turn to Isaiah chapter 40, if you will. Let me add my thank you to what's already been said, and uh, welcome you once again to this Youth Conference 2010. 